Kim Fossa surgery. Uh, Professor Budi is a very good colleague with uh, Jula. So please welcome Professor Budi. Thank you. Yeah. Can I start my lecture? Yes. Now uh, okay. you can start your lecture, Budi. Okay. Uh, I should uh, greet my Ajahn, Professor Konkiat here. <laughs> yeah, he, he will come in. He's joining now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah he joined. Hi, Prof. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Uh, Professor Gonkia, you have to, to, to unmute. Uh, uh, okay. hey, thank you, Budi. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, I will uh, share screen. Okay, now I can see your screen. Yes. Okay. Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, first of all, I would like to thanks to my good friend, my senior, and also my Ajahn, Professor Konskat Sinitpong, for inviting me, for giving me opportunity to give lecture this afternoon. So my topic will be a uh, critical palatine fossa. So our learning object is uh, why name so, and the boundaries the content, the imaging, uh, the approach and pathology involved. So pterygoplatine fossa or PPF is a small narrow space communicating with seven areas via or through eight foramina and canals. With this, uh, this eight foramina and canals here, I, I give number here which correspond on one another. So PPF uh, is communicating with middle cranial fossa through foramen rotundum, with the orbit through inferior orbital fissure, with the nasal cavity through sphenopalatine foramen, and with the oral cavity through greater and lesser palatine foramen, with the pharynx, especially for nasal pharynx with the palatovaginal canal, and with foramen lacerum uh, through the with canal or fidian canal. And with infratemporal fossa in the lateral with pterygo maxillary fissure. So the content of PPS is very complex. No consistent landmark and also no consistent uh, uh, structure, courses or pattern within. And endoscopic approach provide better visualization, less invasive than traditional craniofacial resection. And the key point is understanding the surgical anatomy, including the extension of disease, will lead to safe surgery and successful outcome. Okay, uh, PPF uh, is protected area built up by three bones. This is maxillary bones. Yeah. This maxillary bone and palatine bone in the middle, not, not pure in the middle. Uh, and the posterior, there will be a sphenoidal bone. We can see here that from the maxillary bone, uh, there is tuberosity of maxilla uh, in the in a place where the palatine bowl will attach to maxilla and make partial covering to the medial side of maxillary sinus. So we can here uh, see that the palatine bone have two parts, the vertical part and horizontal part. The horizontal part together with the palatine process of maxillary bone will uh, form the heart palate and the vertical part with uh, partially covering the medial side of maxillary sinus. And we can see there is a, a processus here. There is two processus or three processus here. The first is orbital process and the second is sphenoidal process, uh, which will be attached to a base of three process of sphenoid bone leather. 
and there is a pyramidal process in below uh, will co correspond to the uh, medial and lateral trigger process respectively. And we can see it here attachment of inferior turbinate, attachment of the salamella of middle turbinate in the posterior end, and uh, the salamella of superior turbinate. You can see there is a knot in the apex of the vertical portion of the palatine uh, bone here. Uh, and later we call it sphenopalatine foramen or sphenopalatine knot. You, you notice here there is an attachment of the salamella of middle turbinate, the posterior end. Uh, if you find the sphenopalatine artery, at least at the, at the level of this attachment or just above the level of, of this attachment. So not, not to below of this, not far below of this. And the last uh, bone is a sphenoidal bone. We have the body of sphenoid bone and the roof, planum sphenoidale and also lesser wing and greater wing. And we can see here, there is a foot, we, I call it foot. There is a medial and lateral pterygoid process of sphenoidal bone, which is the base of the uh, pterygoid process. We can find two hole. The first one is foramen rotundum, and the second medio inferior, there is a fidian canal, and actually, there is a smaller uh, hole here, canal. We call it uh, palatovaginal canal, which is like uh, medial to medial uh, pterygoid process of sphenoidal bone. So this, uh, that will be around here, the PPF will be situated. Yeah. So uh, again, the PPF is small and narrow area in this region only. Okay. Okay, this is a combination of the three bones. Uh, you can just notice at the red box uh, and disregard other uh, uh, not signed with the red box. Here is the sphenoidal bone. Sphenoidal bone, there is a, and this is the palatine bone on the right side. And this is maxillary bone on the left side. You can see here this, uh, there is a vertical portion of palatine bone and horizontal portion of palatine bone. And there is pyramidal process of palatine bone will attach to the uh, pterygoid process medial and lateral respectively. And we can see here orbital process anteriorly and uh, sphenoidal process posteriorly with attached to the base of the liquid process of sphenoidal bone and together with a vaginal process of sphenoidal bone will build a canal we call it palato vaginal canal okay and this is the area of the lateral lateral of lateral pterygoid process of sphenoidal bone it is already the infratemporal fossa. So this is infratemporal fossa, then lat medial to it is pterygopalatine fossa. And we can see uh, which uh, are connecting uh, these two areas here. And now the maxillary bone. Maxillary bone, we can see here, this is the orbital floor. Uh, which is uh, formed by the maxillary uh, roof of the maxillary bone, of course, and greater wing of sphenoidal bone, and there is a zygomatic bone. And you, you, uh, you can notice here, there is a fissure here between greater wing of sphenoidal bone and uh, orbital floor of maxillary bone, and a little uh, roll of uh, Psychomatic bone here is inferior orbital fissure. We will talk later. And this is again, this is to bone uh, from medial view. We can see this is a, again palatine bone, uh, vertical portion of palatine bone. And this is the horizontal portion of palatine bone. 
will together with a volatile process of maxillary bone will form the heart pellet here. And you can see there is attachment on Iverio turbinate, attachment of the uh, uh, basal lamella of middle turbinate, the posterior end. And you notice there is a notch in between uh, orbital process of palatine bone and spinoidal process of palatine bone. We call it spinopalatine foramen or spinopalatine notch. So again, if you will, if you want to find the spinopalatine uh, foramen or you, spinopalatine artery and nerve, uh, please go at the level of basal lamella of middle turbinate or just above it, not below. Okay. Again, this is a sphenoidal uh, process of palatine bowl with attached to the base of pterygoid process and form uh, the uh, palatophyginal canal with vaginal process of sphenoidal bone. So uh, our explanation will be repeated again and again uh, until you have a, a three-dimensional imagination of this area. And then at the bottom, you will see the primordial process of pteroid, uh, I'm sorry, uh, primordial process of palatine bone will correspond or coincide with the uh, uh, medial and lateral pteroid uh, process respectively. So again, the pterygopalatine fossa will not lie from the top here until the bottom here but only maybe only a half of this head. So the pterygopalatine fossa only occupy uh, upper third of the maxillary sinus head. So this is the roof of maxillary sinus and this is uh, the base of maxillary sinus and the pterygopalatine fossa is occupy or lie or sitting in the level of upper third of maxillary sinus head, okay? And this is a three bone, uh, sphenoidal bone, uh, again, palatine bone, and maxillary bone. Again, I repeat, this is vertical portion of palatine bone, and this is horizontal portion of palatine bone. With it, we, we can see in the bottom here, there is pyramidal, process of palatine bone will uh, contact with medial and lateral pterygoid process of sphenoidal bone. Okay, and there is a orbital process of palatine bone, and this is a sphenoidal process of palatine bone will attach to the base of pterygoid process. And uh, with vaginal uh, process of sphenoidal bone of form, a palatovaginal canal here. Okay. Uh, now we can see here again the greater wing of sphenoid, is a lesser wing, and also it is a, or, or, a superior orbital fissure. But we don't talk about this. Oh, again, this is greater wing of the sphenoid, and this is the orbital floor, and we can see uh, behind this. Uh, lateral to this, we can see the inferior orbital fissure with connecting a PPF to the uh, orbital. Okay. Uh, this is the posterior view of sphenoidal bone. So this is from uh, behind, from the posterior aspect. We can see here the lateral and uh, medial pterygoid process. Okay. And you can see here the foramen rotundum within the middle cranial fossa, within the macal cave, because there is a dura mater will uh, make envelope in this area. We call, we call it macal cave. Okay. And now there is a, there is a foramen ovale yeah, behind uh, this roof. And we can see this area is already uh, infra temporal fossa. So you can find this is the lateral pterygoid uh, process uh, where uh, the lateral pterygoid muscle is attached with two head 
superior head and the bigger one is inferior head and in the medial side of lateral pterygoid process will attach the uh, medial pterygoid muscle so all the muscle lateral and uh, medial pterygoid muscle is attached to lateral pterygoid process not uh, so not to the medial pterygoid process okay and you will find here the pterygoid plexus it is a plexus of veins will uh, give uh, or drain into the cavernous sinus uh, in the lateral of sphenoid. Here is again this uh, foramen ovale uh, will uh, where the mandibular nerve will come through this and posterior to the mandibular nerve you can see the uh, petros part of the carotid artery internal carotid artery so again so where is the PPF? PPF is not seen from posterior aspect. So PPF is in the be behind of this structure. See? So this is uh, PPF is around here, behind. We cannot see from the back, OK? And this is uh, from front view or from anterior view. Again, you will see the sphenoidal bone here. A lesser wing, greater wing, superior orbital fissure, and there is a pterygoid process, medial and lateral. Again, a lateral pterygoid process is a structure where the lateral pterygoid muscle is attached in the lateral aspect with the upper head smaller and a lower head bigger one. Yeah. And from the lateral aspect and from the medial aspect of lateral pterygoid uh, process, the medial pterygoid muscle will attach to that. Okay. And there is, uh, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is the lateral pterygoid uh, process. You will find there is pterygoid plexus, a plexus of vein with drain to the uh, cavernous sinus. And behind the lateral pterygoid process, you will find the mandibular nerve. And behind the mandibular nerve, you can find the petrous part of ICA, internal carotid artery. What about this? This is the anterior aspect of pterygoid process. You will find that this two hole, the, the lateral superior hole is foramen rotundum, and the medial inferior hole is median canal. So, uh, these two holes uh, lies uh, lateral to medial uh, pterygoid process here. And there is one more hole lat medial to this medial pterygoid process is palatovaginal canal. Palatovaginal canal is formed by uh, uh, sphenoidal process of palatine bone and vaginal process of sphenoidal bone okay so where is the ppf uh, situated ppf is situated is around here so not not all this height but maybe only half of this height okay so this is the uh, uh, because ppf is inverted by pyramid so i call it this is the apex of ppf and this is the base of ppf according to the shape, inverted pyramid. So here is the apex of the uh, PPF, and this, this is the base of PPF, OK? And uh, lateral to lateral pterygoid process is already uh, infratemporal fossa right here, OK? Here is the boundaries. I make, uh, maybe it's not a good illustration about PPF, but I want to try. This is the right side of EPF, uh, inverted pyramid here. So I, I, I mentioned this, the apex, and it is the base, yeah? But uh, we can see here the anterior boundaries of PPS, of PPF is posterior wall of maxillary sinus. Which part of posterior wall of maxillary sinus will uh, 
covering the anterior part of the PPF is infratemporal surface of maxillary bone. And the posterior uh, border of the PPF is pterygoid process, is pterygoid process here, okay? So this is the posterior. So you will find there the foramen rotundum around here, and you will find the median canal around here, and you will find a palatovaginal canal around here, okay? And the lateral is infratemporal fossa, and this is the slit structure. This is called pterygo maxillary fissure, which is connecting the PPF to ITF, infratemporal fossa to pterygo palatine fossa. So this is a PPF, okay? And medial side, it is a part of vertical portion of palatine bone because another part of vertical portion of palatine bone is partially covering the medial side of maxillary sinus. You remember that. And you will find knots at the top of a vertical portion of palatine bone. We call it spinopalatine foramen. So if there is here a spinopalatine foramen, you will see here the orbital process of palatine bone and the posterior is a sphenoidal process of palatine bone. I hope this is clear. And uh, the superior portion border is inferior orbital fissure, as I mentioned, is formed by uh, orbital floor of maxillary sinus and greater wing of sphenoidal bone, okay? And inferior is pyramidal process of palatine bone because uh, again, the pterygo palatine fossa is not uh, totally of this head, but maybe only half of this head, okay? So this is a, a pyramidal process of palatine bone anteriorly to this uh, pterygoid process, medial and lateral. Okay, it's just orientation for you. That is the infratemporal fossa. So infratemporal fossa, lateral to the lateral pterygoid process. Okay. Uh, and you will see the uh, pterygopalatine fossa after entering the pterygomaxillary fissure. And again, also this one from the scaltis inferior view, you will see here the pterygoid process of sphenoidal bone, the lateral, and medial. Now the content of the PPF. There is uh, three important structures uh, within PPF. The first is maxillary artery, the third part of maxillary artery, and the not significant veins. So we will not talk about the veins. All the veins will drain into the plexus pterygoid Maybe you, you remember that the plexus pterygoid and lateral aspect of pterygoid, uh, lateral pterygoid uh, process of sphenoidal bone. Uh, bone. Yeah. So maxillary artery have three parts. The first part, we call it mandibular part, which lie before the lateral pterygoid muscle. And the second part, we call it pterygoid part on lateral pterygoid muscle. And the third part is we call it pterygopalatine part in pterygopalatine fossa around 1.3, 1 1.6 centimeter above the nasal floor, the upper third of maxillary sinus head. Okay. And the second important structure is maxillary nerve, uh, which come out from foramen rotundum. And the third is pterygopalatine ganglion which come out from a Fidian canal. This is uh, very old, yeah, uh, 1959 uh, litera journal by Malcolmson. Uh, we'll describe about the nerve of pterygoid canal. So this is the nerve of pterygoid canal, and this is the Fidian canal. 
and this is the pterygopalatine ganglion in or within the PPF. Now we can see uh, who, what structure built the uh, nerve of the pterygoid canal. The nerve of the pterygoid canal is built by greater superficial uh, petrocell nerve here. And with additional of sympathetic fiber from superior uh, cervical ganglion. So there is superior cervical ganglion uh, goes to the ICA, internal carotid artery, and form a plexus, caroticus plexus. And the fiber of caroticus plexus goes to the uh, uh, ganglion, uh, to the pterygoid canal, uh, we call it deep petrosal nerve. So again, this nerve of pterygoid canal is built by greater superficial petrosal nerve and sympathetic part, deep petrosal nerve. And greater superficial petrosal nerve is formed by, uh, this is the geniculatum ganglion, is formed by uh, secretomotoric fiber from the fascia nerve. This is intermediate, uh, intermediate uh, nerve. And there is additional sensory fiber from superior uh, tractus uh, solitarius. So again, this is an intermediate uh, nerve from the fascial nerve and from the solitarius tractus here goes into the geniculatum ganglion. And uh, postganglionic will form the greater superficial petrosal nerve. And with deep petrosal nerve, it will form the nerve of the pterygoid canal. And the calm come out from the Fidian canal to the uh, pterygopalatine ganglion or sphenopalatine ganglion within uh, PPF. And what about the V2, V2 maxillary nerve? Uh, so this is in the, uh, so it is located in the foramen lacerum, yeah, as I mentioned on the first slide. And this is V2, there is three geminal ganglion which is located uh, within the uh, mechal cave of middle cranial fossa. So this is uh, three part of trigeminal nerve. The first part is ophthalmic nerve, and the second part is maxillary nerve, and the third part is uh, uh, mandibular nerve, which come out through foramen ovale, foramen rotundum, and superior orbital fissure. Again, this is the V2, maxillary nerve. We come out from the foramen rotundum to give brands to the pterygopalatine uh, ganglion, and also give brands to infraorbital uh, nerve, and also to the uh, other nerve we can see after this. Okay, so this is uh, uh, this this diagram is talk about the maxillary nerve courses and pterygopalatine uh, ganglion uh, courses. So uh, this is the branches of third part of maxillary artery. The first part is PSAA. The second part uh, branches is infraorbital artery, IOA. The two, the first of two, uh, so uh, give uh, this artery, maxillary artery, before it entering the pterygomaxillary fissure, they will kill it will give brands. This is PSAA, posterior superior alveolar artery, and infraorbital artery, these two. After entering the pterygomaxillary fissure, the artery makes another branches. The first is descending palatine artery, DPA. And the second is fidian artery, sphenopalatine artery, and pharyngeal artery. You can see this why I make a different color for Fidian artery because there is some controversial according to a different uh, literature. 
the first literature mentioned that feeding artery is come out from the uh, posterior to anterior. It means that feeding artery is a part of internal carotid artery. This is the first literature. And the second literature mentioned that feeding artery come from anterior to posterior as a branch of maxillary artery. So it is correct, I don't know. Uh, but uh, the important thing is that feeding artery connecting uh, between ICA, internal carotid artery, and maxillary artery, which is, it is a part of external carotid artery. So feeding artery connecting to internal and external carotid artery. Okay. And the maxillary nerve, V2. V2 gives brain to infraorbital nerve, which is going through the inferior orbital fissure, going to the canal, we call it infraorbital canal, together with the nerve, uh, together with the artery here. And the second is posterior superior alveolar nerve. It will interface the superior posterior of alveolar area of the teeth. Yeah. And the third is branch to pterygopalatine ganglion to, uh, to give a stimulation to the lacrimal gland. So if you remember that one of the feeding neurectomy complication is the cut of the nerve, so will produce dry eyes, okay? And the third pterygopalatine ganglion. Pterygopalatine ganglion gave a branch to orbital nerve, nasopalatine nerve, including the septum, and posterior superior nasal nerve, to interface uh, the superior part, superior and posterior part of the nasal cavity. And posterior inferior nasal nerve will uh, interface the other part of nasal cavity. And there is a palatine nerve will divide into greater palatine nerve, runs anteriorly to interface the heart palate, and lesser palatine nerve runs posteriorly to interface the soft palate. Okay, and there is uh, another branch, uh, pharyngeal branch. This is a journal uh, written by Choi et al. Yeah, he is not, maybe not uh, ENT, I don't know. He is an oral maxillofacial surgeon, maybe. Yeah. So uh, this picture, this slide, and the next slide, and the next slide. So there is three slides of the days, yeah. Uh, uh, is cadaveric dissection not endoscopically, not endonasally. So it's dissection from the external part, yeah. from the uh, lateral, from the infratemporal fossa, yeah. from the mandible. So don't be confused if you see this picture, because what lie on the posterior part is the posterior wall of maxillary sinus. So don't be confused once again. Uh, in the background of the picture is anterior portion. So it's the posterior wall of maxillary sinus, okay? As you see here, it's look like that uh, the specimen is the, from the left side. You can see this is the maxillary artery come from the infratemporal fossa around here. And before entering the pterygo maxillary fissure, the artery gave branch to PSAA, posterior superior alveolar artery, and infraorbital artery. This one, okay? And the artery is going up superiorly, make a loop, and going down to give branch to sphenopalatine artery and another branch descending palatine artery through which the descending uh, palatine canal is formed around here, yeah? Okay, and there's another branch uh, runs posteriorly, so posteriorly is facing to you. Uh, it is feeding artery and also pharyngeal artery. And then B, B I think the same but uh, different uh, specimen. But actually, uh, the, the branches is 
all the same okay and uh, the figure three it will show us that there is variation of the branches of ioa and psaa in the b we can see that the short ma short mid maxillary artery will give branch uh, infraorbital artery and also uh, uh, posterior superior alveolar artery in this pattern but in the d it's different pattern different pattern uh, psaa and ioa respectively uh, uh, separately branches from the maxillary artery so actually it's not too important but if you dissect the cadaver or you perform the real surgery uh, it may be useful for you uh, to understand the variation of the branches of the artery to avoid any injury of the artery in the real life patient okay and this is still dissection from lateral not endoscopically so uh, the background again is posterior wall of maxillary sinus posterior wall of maxillary sinus i'm sorry so you can see here this is infratemporal fossa of the left side and uh, the artery the first part of ma the second part of MA, then the third part of MA, MA maxillary artery, I was going anteriorly, medially, and superiorly. Okay, and the first, uh, the first, and the first two branches is again IOA and uh, PSAA before uh, the artery entering the pterygo maxillary fissure. After the MA maxillary artery entering the pterygo maxillary fissure, it will give branch to sphenopalatine artery and descending palatine artery. And later they divide it into two greater palatine artery uh, running anteriorly to uh, uh, vascularize the anterior part of the palatum and going up to the septum uh, to form the kissel bach plexus if you remember it and the lesser palatine artery runs posteriorly to vascularize the soft palate okay and from the figure b is the same but it will show you the different pattern of the branches of ioa and psaa okay and this is the head again maybe it is nice to know but i have to mention it in this slide and this is uh, the last three slides of the content uh, show that, again, this is uh, uh, left side, yeah, left side also. We can see here this spinopalatine, uh, feudian ar artery, and descending palatine artery. Yeah. And here also, the uh, maybe it's, it is from the right side, yeah, because the spinopalatine artery is going to the... Uh, uh, medial. So this is medial lateral. So it, it is uh, possibly is right side of the specimen. So this is the maxillary artery, the third part. Yeah. Give brands before entering the pterygo maxillary fissure to inferior orbital artery and posterior superior alveolar artery. Uh, you see that the inferior orbital artery uh, going through the inferior orbital fissure to uh, goes in the infraorbital canal with the nerve okay and this is the feedian 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 artery is going back facing to you because again uh, this slide uh, show the cadaveric dissection from uh, outside from not from indonesia Okay, there is a pattern of branches of SPA, DPA. So if there is uh, branches of IOA and PSAA, and now this is the pattern of branches of SPA and DPA. The first pattern, we call it Y pattern because the SPA and DPA make 100, 180 degree pattern. 
and the B here is intermediate pattern because it's excluding from of the tree. And C is T, T because it's a uh, make a angle here more than 90 degree pattern. And this is M because zero degree pattern. So it is a kind of a variation of the uh, branches of the SPA and DPA you should know during dissection and even in real life surgery. And this is not from lateral, but this is from endoscopic. So this is endonasal, endoscopic endonasal uh, approach. So uh, the background of the picture is pterygoid process of sphenoid bone. We can see here the triangular shape of the pterygopalatine ganglion, which is consists of feeding nerve. Yeah. So if you feed in nerve in foramental tendum, so it is a left side. Okay. So feed in nerve and foramental tendum and inferior orbital nerve and from the pterygopalatine ganglion will goes uh, through the downward is palatine uh, nerve goes into the palatine uh, canal yeah? when later divide into two greater and lesser palatine nerve okay this is maybe a, a clearer uh, picture uh, representing the artery and the nerve you see the palatine nerve will divide into greater and lesser greater runs anteriorly and lesser runs posteriorly. Also, descending palatine artery, yeah? Uh, this uh, will divide into greater palatine artery runs anteriorly and lesser palatine artery runs posteriorly. Both of this structure uh, goes into the canal, palat palatine canal, yeah? Palatine canal purging the pyramidal process of uh, palatine bone. So remember, there is uh, in the aforementioned, uh, there is a pyramidal process of uh, palatine bone. Okay. Again, it's just uh, built to build up your imagination that the maxillary artery has come from lateral, from external carotid artery, and goes to the from lateral to. Uh, to medial, yeah, yeah, to medial anterior superior. Okay, this is the first MA, this is the second MA, and the last is the third MA within uh, PPIF. And this is close up, yeah. At the close up on the left side also, we can see uh, the maxillary artery here runs to the uh, Pterygopalatine uh, fossa through the patelago uh, maxillary fissure. And this is uh, uh, infraorbital artery as a part of maxillary artery before entering the pterygo maxillary fissure goes into uh, the infraorbital canal along with the intraorbital nerve coming out to the infraorbital foramen here and goes to the two brands, the medial superior alveolar nerve and anterior uh, alveolar, anterior superior alveolar nerve. So if you later we uh, approach to the PPF, uh, we call it modif modified Danker approach that some part of anterior wall of maxillary sinus should be removed. It's possibly uh, the complication or the sequel that the medial superior anterior nerve is also sacrificed. So that's why uh, it will uh, cause the numbness of the incisifus or in the uh, or your anterior teeth. Okay. I take this picture from PJ Wormald. This is the limited area PPF only. And this is the zoom in. You can see this is the this is the infratemporal fossa run here, the right side, here, yeah, right side here. And uh, this is the third part of maxillary artery. Yeah. And before entering the pterygo maxillary fissure, it will give brand two. The first is 
I think it's not PSEE. I think it is infraorbital nerve. Uh, I'm sorry, infraorbital artery. So it is an infraorbital artery, and this is posterior superior alveolar artery. So PSE is around here, and is is IOA. Goes, goes to the uh, uh, goes to the uh, uh, infraorbital canal uh, along with uh, infraorbital nerve here. Okay, and after entering the pterygo maxillary fissure, the artery will give branch to the several branches, uh, going loop to the superior. Here is sphenopalatine artery, and also the uh, descending palatine artery. And there is uh, other branch, feedian artery and pharyngeal artery is around here, posterior to that. And if we, uh, if we push the artery down, uh, we can see the nerve. So if you open uh, this uh, posterior wall of maxillary sinus, you will find the periosteum. If after you uh, remove the periosteum, you will find the fat, yeah? Petrigopalatine fossa fat and infratemporal fossa fat. And after that, you will find the arteries and you push down the arteries, you will find the nerve. So that is the order from anterior to posteriorly. You see, this is the ganglion of tricopalatine ganglion. There is three angle. There's median canal, uh, foramen rotundum, and create uh, palatine nerve, okay? And this is from limited exposure to the wider exposure, including the infratemporal fossa of the right side of the specimen. We can see here, this is uh, the same with the previous slide. This is the PPF, limited PPF, and this is PPF and uh, ITF. You can see here, there is the bluish one. It is a pterygoid plexus, a plexus of vein with drain to cavernous sinus, okay? And there is a muscle, uh, superior head and inferior head of the lateral pterygoid muscle, which is very important to open your jaw when you uh, open your mouth something. And uh, this is attached to the lateral uh, aspect of the lateral pterygoid process. And the medial pterygoid muscle will attach to the medial aspect of lateral pterygoid process, uh, will help you to swing like this, swing like this, okay? So lateral pterygoid muscle for open and close your mouth, something. Uh, and the medial pterygoid muscle to uh, swing your mandible, okay? You see it here, uh, lateral to the, uh, this structure, we call it the infratemporal uh, fossa. If the artery uh, lateral to the lateral of uh, pterygoid muscle, we call it the first or mandibular uh, part. If the artery is on the lateral pterygoid muscle, we call it the second part of pterygoid part. And after entering the pterygomaxillary fissure, uh, we call it the third part of the pterygopalatine artery. So I hope it make uh, or build your three-dimensional uh, imagination of the uh, structure within the PPF. It's very complex, but uh, I'm happy if we can understand the, uh, uh, the, the complexity of the structure. Okay, now we go through, we proceed to the imaging. And I think it is a base, yeah, it's a base. Almost, almost we got uh, into or reached to the palatum, but it's not yet the palatum. We can see here the uh, pterygoid canal, yeah, pterygoid canal here, and also Peter palatine foramen. And if we go upper, yeah, go superiorly, we can see here, this is the pterygopalatine fossa. And you can see here, there is a narrowing of the pterygopalatine fossa. We call it pterygomaxillary fissure, which is connecting the infratemporal fossa to pterygopalatine fossa. Okay. And this is uh, the wider area. You can see here, this is the feedian canal, yeah, feedian canal or pterygoid canal. This pterygoid canal, uh, uh, its uh, origin 
from the foramen last room. Yeah. Okay. So this is foramen last room nearby the uh, uh, petrus apex of temporal uh, temporal bone. Okay. Uh, the next is uh, this is the coronal view of the imaging. We can see the petrigo palatine fossa around here. So uh, not lateral to the lateral uh, aspect of the uh, pterygoid process, okay? And we can see two, uh, yeah, yeah, not clear here, but it is a, it is a Fidian canal, it is a Fidian canal, and you will find in another section, this is a, a foramen rotundum, I'll see. And I'll see, this is foramen rotundum and this is a Fidian canal. If you find one more, one more smaller, smaller canal, it is called palatovaginal canal. Okay. Uh, this is also it is from Prof. P. J. Warmout show us the uh, crosshair in simultaneous section from the uh, uh, sagittal section and the coronal section. We can show that there is a pterygo palatine fossa around here. This is the foramen of spinopalatine foramen here. So uh, it is at the top, at the top of the pterygopalatine fossa. Uh, we can see here this uh, this uh, 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 palatine canal going through, connecting the PPF into the oral cavity, but it's not that wide because there's a narrowing here uh, due to the attachment or close. Uh, one another between pyramidal process of the palatine bone and the pterygoid process of sphenoidal bone. Okay, and this is from another journal, but actually it's the same. This is the pterygopalatine fossa at the level of uh, sphenopalatine foramen, and this is already the infratemporal fossa, and this is the narrowing. We call it pterygomaxillary fissure. And there is a canal here, do we call it a foramen rotundum, which come from the middle cranial fossa. There is Michael cave around here that the dura mater make an envelope of the cave. Okay. And basically you're talking about this area which is situated behind this is our pterygo pterygo palatine fossa. Pterygo palatine fossa going down the palatine canal. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, intra uh, oral cavity here. And this is the foramen rotundum. This is middle cranial fossa. So foramen rotundum connecting the middle cranial fossa to uh, PPF. And this is also a good uh, picture from uh, Bin Hero. Uh, will show us the palato uh, vaginal canal at top. Uh, or palatosphenoid canal. Yeah, palatovaginal canal is formed by uh, sphenoidal process of palatine bone and vaginal process of sphenoidal bone. It's situated uh, medial to the medial uh, pterygoid process. So if you find the whole medial to medial to uh, uh, pterygoid process, it is palatovaginal canal. But if you find two holes uh, lateral to the uh, medial pterygoid process, it is a Fidian canal, uh, medio inferiorly and uh, foramen rotundum uh, lateral superiorly. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I skip this because, uh, ah. This is more clear because this is a uh, few from the inferior to superior. So sometimes it will make you uh, confusion. But uh, important thing that this is a vaginal uh, process of sphenoidal bone, and this is a sphenoidal process of palatine bone. So it is the palatal vaginal canal. But this picture make you uh, confused because it's uh, from uh, from below to the up. So it is more clear to understand. So this is coena from anterior to posterior. Uh, you can see this is the uh, medial uh, process of the uh, 
medial pterygoid process of the sphenoidal bone and there is this is the canal yeah? the canal uh, palato vaginal canal maybe it's not too important for you to know but uh, uh, because uh, not many literature uh, give the good depiction of the uh, palato vaginal canal with the pharyngeal artery and nerve come to innervate to vascularize the nasopharynx so ppf is communicate to the nasopharynx through this canal okay okay approach to ppf uh, we can use endoscopically and non endoscopically uh, from endoscopically uh, we can uh, Use uh, through endoscopic medial maxillectomy or modified denker approach if we go to go far lateral. This is the opening of the corridor. I think this opening, this procedure is not uh, difficult to us to do, but the challenging part is when we go or reach at destination because the destination contains the complex neurovascular structures and protected our space. So uh, you have to clearly understand the structure uh, within the PPF, okay? This is additional procedure, canine fosatrephine, but actually this is not uh, very, not beneficial for approaching the pterygopalatine fossa because uh, canine fosatrephine is limited to uh, uh, overcome the pathology within the maxillary sinus. And the second, a septal window. Septal window is beneficial for forehand techniques, be nostril. So if we have the difficulty in uh, putting uh, many instruments in single nostril, you can help to uh, by uh, creating the septal window. Septal window consists of Killian incision of the one part and horizontal incision and the contralateral part in different level. You see here, or if you don't want to make a septal window, you can just uh, try uh, uh, make a, a septal transpo transposition. What is septal transposition? That you you put the instrument in single nostril, then you push the instrument to the septum, so the 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 septum expanded contralaterally. It is called septal transposition okay this is pyramid aperture so if uh, we approach or open the corridor the endoscopic medial maxillectomy we preserve the aperture but if we go to laterally to infratemporal fossa we have to remove this aperture as i mentioned uh, before in the previous slide uh, uh, removing this aperture, the anterior wall of maxillary sinus uh, may uh, create complication or sequel uh, the numbness of the uh, anterior teeth because the medial superior alveolar nerve will be sacrificing also. Okay, uh, and this is uh, only uh, example, but actually in in most cases we remove all this part of. Uh, lateral nasal wall. So it just uh, show you uh, the prelacrimal uh, approach here. Actually, this is uh, removed also, so not preserved. Yeah, maybe uh, we can preserve it. Uh, let's say for simple cases like uh, there is foreign body like a bullet. Yeah, bullet in the pterygopalatine fossa. So there is no tumor. Something we can uh, put this prelacrimal recess approach and then we close up uh, afterwards okay so there is one uh, literature cavallo this is neurosurgeon uh, uh, tell us about the it is not a uh, dissection but this is approach surgically so if we may, uh, notice uh, of my 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 previous slides it's all the cadaveric dissection so anatomical dissection. But in this uh, journal, uh, we learn about the, uh, the approach uh, in, in surgically approach to PPF. So we can uh, limit through the middle meatal approach 
and we can remove all the lateral nasal wall to infra uh, inferior turbinectomy approach. So we can see here uh, there is a posterior wall of maxillary sinus and this is uh, part of uh, vertical portion of palatine bone is already uh, uh, removed and then this is the rest of the vertical palatine bone uh, covering the medial side of the pterygo palatine fossa is preserved over there a later remove also and we can see the ethmoidal crest here and the sphenopalatine artery remember if you want to find the sphenopalatine artery please make a limitation uh, please make a uh, uh, important landmark of the basal lamella of the medial turbinate at posterior end. Maybe the sphenopalatine artery will come out at the level of the basal lamella or just above to the basal lamella of middle turbinate, not below of the basal lamella of middle turbinate. Yeah. Okay. And now this uh, picture show that this uh, posterior wall is already open. This posterior wall already open, and also uh, this uh, 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 spinopalatine foramen is open. Then we can see the pterygopalatine fossa, a limit of the pterygopalatine fossa. And we can see here a pterygomaxillary fissure connecting, to, uh, connecting PPF to ITF here, infratemporal fossa. And we can see as the posterior border of the PPF is to with process of spinoidal bone, which consists of, uh, I'm sorry, uh, not consists of, but uh, we will find also the foramen rotundum and uh, petriquid canal or fidian canal. Yeah. Uh, this, is, uh, this is another side. This is the pterygo, uh, pterygoid process, I think. And this is maxillary bone. So it is the right side. It is the left side. Okay. Uh, you can see here the uh, pterygo maxillary fissure. And uh, you will find uh, the artery, or something around here. Yeah, maxillary artery. Uh, Give it brands before entering the pterygomaxillary fissure. Give it brands to infraorbital artery and posterior superior alveolar artery, and goes uh, entering the pterygomaxillary fissure to give brands to spinopalatine artery and descending palatine artery with the canal bursting the pyramidal bone of palatine uh, pyramidal process of palatine bone. Okay, so again. This is, uh, this is the letter dissection. I think we don't uh, reach this area. This is the posterior uh, area uh, to the cavernal sinus, to the macal cave here. This is V2, the macal cave or middle cranial fossa. This is palato, uh, uh, palatine canal, uh, pterygoid canal, goes to the uh, foramen last room, yeah, in the apex of Petrus, Petrus apex. Okay, I think uh, the pathology, the last, but uh, we don't talk much about this. Uh, the most pathology uh, we found in PPF is GNA. So if you found there is a widening of the uh, pterygopalatine fossa, we call it holman miller sign, the anterior bowing or posterior wall of maxillary sinus. Uh, it uh, highly possibly is GNA. And also it's combined with a destruction of pterygoid process and the basis of sphenoid. Kindly remember that the, 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 the tumor is mainly vascularized by maxillary artery, but also another branches of internal carotid artery is possibly to uh, vascularize the tumor. So you have to concern about the many vascular uh, many vessel vascularize the tumor, not only the maxillary artery. Okay, another maybe swanoma, maybe non-tumor, non-tumor, or show due tumor of the PPF. Okay. This is uh, actually uh, not perfect surgery because uh, this is a GNA of the left side. We perform uh, ansinectomy and middle meatal anthrostomy, and we cut 
the inferior turbinate because we we will do a modified tanker approach. This is the uh, frontal process of maxillary bone. This is the pyramid aperture. Yeah. I don't use, I didn't use drill in this case. And this is the lacry nasolacrimal duct. It's cut obliquely. And we chiseling the posterior wall of maxillary sinus. And we'll find the periosteum. What should we done after this? Actually, I'm, I, I was doing wrong, yeah. Uh, actually, I, I have to remove this part of bone, the vertical portion of the palatine bone, but I didn't, so it's not a good example for you, yeah. I just to give you that uh, after periosteum is removed, we can find the fat and we can find the maxillary artery. I don't have a clip, so I use a uh, traditional ligation. Again, this is wrong. Uh, the correct one is removing the uh, palatine bone first, then we approach to the tumor. But I didn't, so again, it's not good. As I should remove this one, but I didn't, okay? This tumor, uh, not only vascularized by maxillary artery, but also the part of internal carotid artery. So I pull out the tumor and the bleeding is come out from the back. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, 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 my experience on this. Okay, as the resume that pterygo palatine fossa is a small space communicating with critical areas, seven areas to seven or eight foramina and canals. Uh, and this is protected area uh, by the bone, maxillary bone, uh, palatine bone, and also sphenoid bone. And there is compact neurovascular content, third part of maxillary artery, maxillary nerve, and pterygopalatine ganglion from the pterygoid canal uh, nerve. And challenging approach require mastery of its anatomy and anatomical changes due to pathology involved within. So, uh, uh, for me and for all, uh, please do several cardiac dissection to master uh, to master the anatomy. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry for anything wrong. Uh, I explain and I give back uh, the time to the host or moderator. Thank you so much, Professor Bodhi, for a wonderful lecture. Um, I think it's Thank one you. of the best uh, anatomy explanation part um, yeah. that uh, really delights us. Uh, uh, some question that I have read before is very clear by your talk today. So is there any question from, from participants can type um, in the chat box? And I will uh, ask uh, Dr. Bodhi. Uh, the question from me, uh, okay. in, in like JNA case that you have shown us, uh, did you embolization? Yeah, someone asking the same question. Oh, yeah, from Asnida. How are you? <laughs> Doctor? Thank you, Dr. Lalita. Actually, I have no, I have no many experience on doing a GNA surgery. Because in my country, GNA is uh, uh, operated by oncology division. So <laughs> we are in a rhinology division, uh, didn't perform uh, to more surgery. If the oncology uh, asks me to do, then uh, I will do, but uh, I cannot do for the first time. So in my country, the embolization of GN is not common. Uh, but if the GN is too big, that uh, tendency of bleeding, much bleeding, then embolization uh, can. Uh, help to reduce the bleeding post-operatively or during, uh, during the surgery, 
of course. But again, I have uh, no many experience. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, uh, I think nowadays, uh, there, there are two kinds of surgery. Someone do the embolization and someone didn't do the embolization. But I think the key of the surgery is when you do the surgery, you have to control the IMX. Uh, before you attack the tumor, you have to, to uh, do the good exposure and clip the IMX or control the IMX before you, uh, before you remove the tumor. I think it's very important. This is my idea. Yeah. Yes, agree with you. Uh, from the CTA, so computerized uh, tomography, angiography scan, we can see the main vascular uh, for the tumor. The IMAX is the main vascular, but maybe we have to remember that there is another vascularization of the tumor, like a part of the septum, like a, a branches of the ICA. So we have to, uh, I agree with the, Dr. Karchon, that we have to deal with all the vascular, uh, vascularizing the tumor before uh, removing the uh, to, to tumor itself to minimize bleeding. There is one more question um, from Steve Roy. Uh, he said, thank you for your lecture. And he asking about the uh, country lacrimal approach um, sufficient in exposure of PPF or you need modified anger is must do procedure. Okay. Uh, if we see the position of the corridor to the target of PPF, if the, if the approach is limited to the PPF only, so prelacrimal or endoscopic medial maxillotomy is sufficient uh, procedure. But if we want to go uh, far lateral, more than more than the PPF, so modified tanker should be performed. I think I think that uh, maybe uh, Dr. Kanchon have uh, another uh, opinion on this. Uh, yes, I, I agree with uh, Professor Budi. Uh, if uh, the lesion not go more laterally, maybe uh, prelacrimal approach or modify uh, medial mastectomy can go to the tumor, but if it's go more laterally or go to the implant temporal fossa, I think uh, should be better. But uh, now uh, I want to share some idea. Uh, when you do the pre lacrimal approach, and if you cannot reach the tumor that go lateral, you can extend the pre lacrimal approach to be the modified anchor by you drill the piliform aperture from inside to outside. You didn't need to uh, raise the periosteum at the anterior wall of the mat, but just do the piriform aperture and it can change to modified anchor. Okay. Mm. Also, Budi, I'd uh, like your uh, lecture and your extensive uh, review the anatomy is very important before, before you go to the PPF in the surgery. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karchan. Yeah. <laughs> so. Bobo, uh, does anyone uh, have a question? Uh, uh, for, for clear, clarify the term, um, am I correct that when you say modified anger and modified pre chemo is uh, the same procedure? Uh, pre lacrimal approach is uh, quite different with modified danger. Modified danger is uh, pre lacrimal plus, plus the removing anterior wall of the maxillary sinus. So here, this, uh, the aperture is also removed. But a prelacrimal approach, we preserve the piriform aperture. 
Uh, I, I mean, uh, when somebody say uh, modify pre red leg cremal, is that uh, similar to, to, to modified anger? I, I don't know about the, uh, any kind of variation of term, but uh, I usually use uh, the term modified anger. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. It's more clear and more, more well defined uh, because it's modified pre lacrimal. Uh, maybe another sense of another procedure. <laughs> yeah. There is uh, one question from Dr. Cho. <laughs> Do we need to close the posterior maxillary wall after removing the tumor? Or do you pack with the with something else? Okay, thank you. Uh, usually, uh, we can we can uh, close with the flap, but uh, simply we just uh, leave uh, the posterior wall open, and later uh, we can see that the area will be closed by the tissue around there. Maybe in one month after surgery, we can see that the area already closed by uh, fibrous tissue and, and we can manage it. Uh, and maybe in one year, uh, the situation is already uh, what is permanent. So, yeah. So we don't need anything to cover that part, right? Uh, no, actually we don't know, yeah. We don't know need. Uh, we don't need to do uh, closure. Uh, if there are no more question, we have of uh, uh, Excellent Center Endoscopic Sinus Surgery of Jualungon Hospital. Uh, I would like to say thank you so much for Professor Budi for a wonderful lecture today, uh, which uh, we have fellows here and also our resident here, and uh, hope uh, next 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 time we should have collaboration like this again, maybe every two months or every three months. I think it's very 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 good collaboration and maybe next time it can be Jualongkorn turn or it can be a uh, Malaysian turn. Okay. Yes. I would like to thank uh, Prof. Budi for your excellent lecture and Professor Budi, Dr. Nida is our good friend. <laughs> uh, yeah. Hi, hi, Gachon. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, it's a very excellent, excellent lecture and excellent topic. And you really made us revisit the Terigo Palatai Fossa. Right, very difficult because, case. Yeah, it's a very difficult uh -huh. case. And uh -huh. when you have a JNA, we get headache. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, because you think of the breathing and you think about the approach. And and <laughs> I agree with you, Budi, and also yeah. Kachon. The before the initial part, before we touch the tumor, I think the exposure of the, uh, the exposure of the tumor is important. We need to have a, a very open everything as much as we can before we touch the tumor. Okay. All right. Yes, because, correct. Yes. Because I think we have one one experience that we just go because the tumor is very small and we're very confident with it. However, structure. Yeah. however, because once the exposure is limited, once we touch that, it bleeds like hell. Oh my God. So <laughs> that's a, a, a very tough lesson learned for, uh, for me also. So that, so that try to get as much as possible the exposure, try to delineate all the IMAX yes. as, as, as far as you can. Right. <laughs> Yes, once bleeding come, 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 coming to you, then everything is red. Everything yes. cannot be seen anymore. <laughs> we, we, we have, I think, few cases yeah. whereby we have to stop the, the surgery because patient need to be CPR on table because of the bleeding. I see. So yes. much. So it's a very terrible. I think two times our patient got CPR on table because of bleeding from JNA then it's, it's a lesson learned for everybody. Yeah.
I think this is good. Maybe uh, the stressing point that the anatomical uh, structure will be changed uh, if uh, there is two more in the PPA. So we cannot see uh, the, good, uh, the good alignment of the maxillary artery and the branches after the, the tumor is there and the structure is changed. So we have to understand the normal situation before we're doing the abnormal situation, I think. Yes, ag agree with you, Dr. Budi. <laughs> yeah. Okay, actually I'm on leave at home. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to thank Thanks okay. to everybody, to uh, Dr. Lalita, to Dr. Kachon, and uh, especially uh, from Konkiat, uh, uh, from University of Chulalongkorn, for having me today. I'm very happy and uh, meet up with you all. Uh, long time no see with Dr. Lalita Pratani. <laughs> long time no see since the pandemic uh, on March of this year. So yeah. hopefully that uh, pandemic will subside uh, uh, soon, then we yeah. can uh, meet in person. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Also, Ramitha is also with us today. Hi, Ramitha. Oh. Uh, oh. Prof. Ramitha. Hello, Hello guys. Hi. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Silent <laughs> observer. <laughs> oh, <I'm> silent <laughs> observer. <laughs> Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> no, 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 it's okay. Everything's good. Everything's good, uh -huh. Okay. Great. Thank you, Lalita and uh, Kachun and the team in uh, Thailand. Very, very good organizing uh, yeah. uh, this uh, event, uh, this talk. Very, very good. I'm, I'm happy. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, everyone. And okay. if there you, have everyone. any lecture next time, I will provide you information. Thank you, y'all. Thank okay. you. Goodbye. 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 I just Bye. want to say probaha kirim salam. Ah, see. Ah. Yeah, he got he got other problems. He got other cases today, so he cannot join our meetings. So he say hello to everybody. Okay. Ah. Waalaikumsalam. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye. Nina. Have, have bye a happy bye. new year, everybody. Stay happy safe. Year. Happy new year. Happy year. Yes. Happy New Year, Happy New Year, bye, stay safe guys.